When it comes to taking entries in trading, there is no strategy that's easier than taking an entry off a trend line. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make perfect entries using trend lines. Here's a quick overview of what to expect from this video. Now be sure to smash the like button and get your notes ready. This is the part of the video where I show you how to draw the trend lines and how to make your entries. And then after this, we'll kind of go over the importance of time frames. We'll go over a good example and then we'll go over a bad example. So make sure you don't just stop at this point in the video because if you just know how to draw the trend lines and make the entries, that's good and all, but you won't know how to do this with the highest probability of success. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are looking at AMD. To draw a trend line, it's gonna look different on each time frame. I, I find that this one is best drawn on the four hour. And this is definitely something you wanna play around with and look at uh, depending on what time frames, uh, how long you plan on being in a trade, it's kind of going to determine maybe where you should be looking for trend lines and patterns and whatnot. But looking at it, I caught this on the four hour. Uh, trend line, you're basically just going to need to be able to draw a line connecting the points, the tops of it. And the wicks at the top aren't as important. The wicks are, here, let's zoom in. These little black parts, if they break through the line, that's perfectly fine. What's important is the body of the candle. All right, and you can see right here, let me actually move that up a little bit, that these bodies are not breaking through this candle. All right, so right here, you can see we have a trend line going right here through the top. And then also we kind of have one on the bottom too, if you really want to look. Uh, you could go back as far as here, maybe not, maybe not that far here. But you can go right here and see we have a trend to the bottom. So looking at this trend right here, you're not going to recognize the trend this early. So these first three touches are kind of irrelevant. But after you see these three, you might realize, hey, we have a trend going. And seeing that trend, maybe you did draw this back here. And maybe this looked a little more like this. Seeing this trend right here, after you made this third one. Essentially what you're doing is you're waiting for it to touch one of the walls. Once you get the touch of one of the walls, that is when you make your entry. So if I were going to enter this trade, I'd be entering for the downside right here. Once it touched this, I'd be sure to set a stop pass and then I would target wherever the low looked like it could go ideally. But honestly, once the momentum shifted, which probably would have been right here, I would have been out of the trade. And had I rode this trade, that would have been a $12 move right there. And there is a lot of money to be made with options riding a $12 move. All right. So yeah, that's when you would make your entry. That would be your stop loss. And now that you know how to draw the trend lines and how to draw your trade, we now need to talk about time frames. All right, so this right here, call this your time frame cheat sheet. I said to make sure you're taking notes. If you're not taking notes, make sure to take a screenshot of this. If you're trading options, this is going to let you know how much time you need to get on your contracts. To answer the question, how much time do I need on my contracts? You always want to have more time than you expect the trade to play out. Uh, you don't want to have too much more because if you have too much more, it's going to limit your profits. But if you don't have enough time, that's going to kill your profits as well. So because of that, you want to make sure you're paying attention. Now, with that in mind, honestly, if I'm on these higher time frames, I'm probably swing trading some stocks, trading some leaps. But uh, looking at it, if I'm on the monthly chart, these are trades I'm expecting to take anywhere from six months to a year. So if I'm on the monthly chart, I'm probably getting two year leaps. If I see some trend lines and I'm trading on the weekly chart, it can take anywhere from one to three months. I'm probably getting six months just because first off the move is probably a massive move I'm watching and I want more time so that I don't have to worry about theta. Next up, if I'm on the daily chart, this is something I'm expecting to take up to a month. And in this case, probably going to get anywhere from 45 days to two months on the contract. All right, on the four hour chart, four hour chart is actually where most of my $100 plays come from if you're in the Discord. Uh, so if you wanna make those for yourself, hey, just look and see what you see on the four hour and you know, give yourself a month. That's, I try to give myself a lot of time to be right. And you see how it's playing out. It's playing out well right now. So yeah, just take that same information, use that same 
knowledge and apply this to different time frames. So yeah, if I'm on these lower time frames, like if I'm on the 10 minute, this is probably where I start considering trading dailies, maybe even the 30 minute if I'm trading a zero day to expiration and I see the move has kind of been made or it's about to make a move and it's about to make a big one, I might. Above these time frames, I'm going for more time. Now with that being said, let's take a look at a live example of a trade I took on Tesla. All right, now you can see my chart looks a little messy, but I have all this here because first off, I still see more for this trade, but it was a Friday, so on Fridays we have zero day to expirations. And if you wait till later in the day, the contracts get super cheap. So I was actually able to take $21 into $60 and I had two contracts. So that was over a 200% return. So $42 into $120, I'll take that any day. Looking at the trade I took, all right, you can see here we're on the 30 minute chart. We have these trend lines. Of course, I took my entry right here and I actually took it on the five minute. So I was kind of waiting. We were kind of trading sideways into this. As soon as we broke this trend line, I entered. It was less than a 10 minute trade, about a $2 move. I took profits right here. It went down and started coming back up. So I took profits right here and yeah, $21 into $60 times two. So 40 two dollars into 120 so good profits to be had right there not always going to bounce from one end to the other so just kind of try to ride the momentum you notice it kind of came in here it's no longer trading in this range sometimes the market makers will make it go sideways and you know it'll kind of make it expire worthless so that's why uh, you want to catch it right off the edge because it has that momentum uh, there is a lot of liquidity in this instance, this is trendline liquidity, which kind of gives the stock or asset momentum as it's bouncing off the trend line. So this was a good example. I want to show you another trade I made that went bad and what went wrong and go over how you can catch it and not make wrong trades like I did. All right. So I made this trade directly after I did Tesla. I think I deleted it because it was invalidated, but the trade plan looks something like this. I did draw it on the four hour, but I did not realize we had this four hour demand zone up here. Notice we get this strong sell off. We actually come in here, tap into the demand zone and we get this strong candle where we come down and then we come back up. Okay. So I'm seeing, oh, there's this trend line down here and I'm completely forgetting Oh, this candle is still coming out of a supply zone. I think I called it a demand zone earlier, but a supply zone. And this is a strong sell-off area. And yeah, I entered the trade like right here. I was going to swing it into next week, but I cut out, took like a 30% loss on this trade. So that would have been some good money. But what happened is we actually confirmed we broke out and we came down. And, and one thing that's important to do, whenever you fail a trade, look back at the trade figure out what went wrong. After some looking, I realized, yo, there was a big supply zone up here on the four hour and I shouldn't have entered the trade. Had I paid attention, I wouldn't have entered the trade. So yeah, be on the lookout for, you know, tapping in the supply or demand zones because they carry a lot more strength than trend lines. You just learned how to make extra crispy entries using trend lines. But if you want to increase your probability of success trading these entries, you're going to want to make sure that it's not out of any supply or demand zones. Be sure to check out this video right here to make sure that you're drawing them correctly. And to those of you that made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off and I want to change your life.